The Draghi effect still being felt across European markets. Today, Spain's two-year borrowing costs are the lowest in three months. I'm Jamie McGeever and this is Market Pulse. Well, let's get straight out now to Chris Beecham. He's market analyst at ING Index. Chris, um, fairly dramatic moves on the Spanish yields uh, today, particularly at the short end, uh, down to 3.5%. It does seem as if the draggy effect really is taking hold throughout the Spanish bond complex, and especially at the short end, as yields drop on expectations that we'll see bond buying from the ECB later on in the year, following on from the press conference last week. Now, don't forget, I mean, just um, a mere 10 days ago, they were above 7% uh, before his speech in London. Exactly. It's been, the move has been quite impressive, really, how that's come down from 7% to around half that now. Um, it's an indication of how the investors really feel that the ECB finally is behind them and they're expecting some sort of action to come later in the year that now that the Draghi's managed to win over support from the other members of the central bank. And of course the, the, the fall in the short end has meant the, the curve has steepened quite dramatically. Just looking now, 315 basis points, it's the steepest it's been in uh, 20 years. Well, exactly. So it's a sort of reflection that Spain is now sort of more able to fund itself in the short term, which is the key element really at the moment in the debt crisis that the government in Madrid can keep itself tying over for the rest of the year or at least until October. Now it has no bond auctions planned for August. So at least for the moment, time has been bought for the government. Um, as you say, Spain's funded till October. Um, August is traditionally holiday month. Um, do you think Spain will request, will request a bailout and if so, when? If it does ask for one, then it's likely to do so probably later on in September. We have the German Constitutional Court decision on September the 12th, so we'll probably wait until after that. That's been decided, and then we'll see whether Spain, how it views its funding position then and what conditions it wants to have attached to any bailout it receives from the EU. And, of course, Mariano Rajoy, the Prime Minister, has a, he seems to be backtracking slightly on his no bailout stance. Um, that's Spain. What about Italy? Uh, is it in the same boat? Um, it's sort of one step behind Spain, really. It's always been considered the next domino in the system. Once we have Paris is pushing both Spain and Italy to receive a bailout, and now you sort of have a dance between Madrid and Rome over who goes first. But it's likely the sort of noises we hear coming from Rome is that Italy will try to wait at least until Spain receives a bailout before it considers its own options in this process. Just to finish up, Chris, um, how, how, would you, how do you trade the, the banks and the financials of both Spain and, and Italy under huge pressure the last few months? Um, is there light at the end of the tunnel? Well, it does seem at this moment there is a bit of brief respite for banks in both Spain and Italy. And we could see that sort of optimism continue for the rest of August and September on the expectation that we'll see action from the ECB later in the year. So for now, you might see the rally continue. But in the long term, this, the future still remains somewhat uncertain for those banks if they're dependent on actions from the ECB. OK, Chris, thank you very much. My thanks thank there you. to Chris Beecham from IG Index. Plenty more throughout the afternoon and keep up with us on Twitter at Reuters Insider. I'm Jamie McGeever. This is Reuters.